guys. Uh, it's Kirk from the Forever Homestead. Um, so it is uh, first week in November uh, 2022. Um, although it's kind of hard to tell because it's 14 degrees out here. It doesn't really feel like winter. Um, sorry for the background noise. We got the wood splitter going. Um, one of the big things about you know off grid and and our lifestyle and all that is that prepping for winter. You know, there's a lot of firewood to be cut. Um, so many tasks that have to be done but one thing that we have learned um, for anyone that's followed our channel you know that we are an off-grid homestead but the one thing we've learned after five years of living off-grid is that it's hard to do it on uh, solar alone um, solar just doesn't cut it here in in northern Ontario um, on the Bruce Peninsula um, we rely pretty heavily on our generator um, in the winter months so you know usually November December January February maybe December on um, but the uh, price of propane has skyrocketed over the last couple years um, we have a 500 pound tank and we used to fill it uh, sorry we uh, it used to cost us $800 to fill it and now this year our first fill has cost us over $1,400 um, considering we go through three of them easily over the over those three or four months um, just you know doing the math for five thousand dollars for propane I mean we'd be cheaper to be on the grid so we've decided that it's time to add to our off-grid power plant so to speak and we uh, very last minute you know pushing pushing the ground freezing weather here uh, we've decided that we are going to put in a, um, a 2,000 watt uh, wind turbine um, so this weekend we are it's kind of the prep work because starting on Sunday it's actually supposed to snow and temperatures are really going to drop for us so we need to get all the anchor points in for the guys on the on the tower this spot the boneyard here it's kind of where everything just kind of goes to die while we're building you know it's usually trailers sit here and things like that but then it's also you know all the behind me all the a lot of the cutoffs that are still left from milling our lumber for the timber frame um, we've got a bunch of logs back there that have been milled that, you know, at the exact time didn't have a purpose. Um, there's gates and, and all kinds of stuff here. I've actually, you know, a shed that blew down that I'm, I'm hoping to fix because we have a brand new cover for it. Um, but anyway, I've been working the last few days at starting to clean this up. Um, I have a friend coming down this weekend and we're going to dig all the holes and um, get 35 bags of concrete poured into the holes. Um, so I'm going to bring you along for that journey on and off over the weekend. Uh, yeah, we're going to have four mounting points for um, for the guy lines. So there's 12 guy lines in total and we're going to have four mounting points uh, all 90 degrees from each other. Um, there's a lot of different ways that I see people doing it. Uh, but what I've decided to do is you can buy these um, foundation screws. So we're using these foundation screws here. All it is basically is an auger on the bottom. Um, it's like uh, four, I think they're 51 inches in total. Um, and these ones are the adjustable ones, which isn't super exciting for me, but it's the only ones that I could find locally. So what they have is this, this piece here is adjustable. Um, and you can you screw this nut down, kind of like a jack stand for a basement. And that is how you, you level it. But what I'm doing, um, because this is meant to have a load push down on it, not pull up on it. Um, so what I'm doing is taking this nut off um, and then this piece actually slides right down over top of this. So I am currently grinding the metal, or grinding the paint off of it um, and I'm welding this piece to that piece. Um, so I've got, so here's a couple that I've, I've just finished. So it's all welded up and then I've, I'd spray some uh, trim clad paint on it. Here's one that uh, I've just welded. Yeah, my welding skills are not the best. I don't do a lot of welding, but uh, I'm pretty good with a grinder, so <laughs> it all works out. Um, so I'm just gonna make one more of these. Um, uh, get this one all prepped to go. Um, and then I will uh, bring you back. So this 
that threaded part isn't needed anymore. It's just a square tubing, so that just fits down over there. And then we just weld this all the way around, uh, make it all one nice piece. Uh, I don't really have a place to set the camera, so I don't really want to embarrass myself and show you my welding anyway. All right, so we got all four of them done. Two there, two there, they're all painted up. Um, I just put this thing together. Uh, basically, this is just uh, two foot long, just two inches wide. Um, I don't know what they call it, channel, U channel. Um, it's just a uh, quarter inch steel. Um, I just welded a hunk of scrap threaded rod to the bottom. Um, and then I just have this um, spacer cut out of plywood, or sorry, out of uh, old scrap lumber here. So it's just temporarily screwed to the lumber. Um, so I have the holes line up all the way through. Um, so this is going to. Oh, I'm sorry. So this thing will actually go into the. get embedded into some concrete. Um, two inches down from this wood here is where the baseline is going to be. So that part down there will all be in concrete. Um, that bolt on the bottom is just welded on there to stop it from pulling out. And then once it's up and dried, this 2x4 uh, will come out of the center. Um, and this 2x4 has been ripped down to a little bit bigger than the diameter of the Schedule 40 pipe there. Um, so once it's all hardened up, this can come out. Um, I will make those holes bigger for a half inch bolt or something like that. And those will go right into the screw right or go right through the Schedule 40 pipe. Um, by using this 2x4, we can uh, put the whole thing down, use some other 2x4 scraps, kind of pound in some stakes and everything to make sure this is level and plumb and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but there'll be more about that tomorrow for sure. Um, I've got all my parts cut and I'm going to do a little cleanup of all the welding stuff and then I'm going to start tidying up over there some more so tomorrow when it's supposed to be raining and snowing <laughs> we um, won't have to do Alright, so it is cold and miserable and raining um, but we're almost done. There hasn't been a lot of video because it sucks. <laughs> uh, so this is what we got. We're digging uh, four foot holes uh, down on like a 45 degree angle which isn't too bad when you're digging in sand. Uh, just use the post hole digger here. And then what we do is we take our device here and they go down in the hole like that. So they're just kind of sitting down in there. Um, and then I screw them in another uh, eight inches or so. So these are just, I can't do it one-handed, but basically you just turn these things um, with like pushing down on them and they start to dig into the sand. So I dig them down in uh, another another foot or so, um, and the bottom of the the bottom of the um, the hole we've actually kind of made it into a bell, so it's wider down there, so we can put more concrete in there. Um, we're trying to do uh, five or six bags in each one. Um, hopefully that's strong enough to hold it all. And get the first section of our wind turbine mast up. Um, but first I gotta kinda do some design work and a little bit of welding and stuff like that. So here's what we got going on. Uh, I've got a 21 foot section of uh, Schedule 40 uh, two inch pipe. Um, I've just got some blocking on it to stop it from rolling on me because I need to mark uh, an edge on it. Um, I'm gonna scribe an edge on it and that'll give me a center point that I can put the get the center of the pipe all the way around kind of thing um, and then I can drill my half inch holes that go into the, the stand uh, the base out there um, and then I also need to about six inches down from the top I need to weld on four flanges that I have to make uh, to hold the guy lines um, and also down around this side here I need to um, make and weld a uh, like a coupler, uh, I think it's two and two and a half inch pipe, uh, like a sleeve that'll go on, weld onto this pipe here, uh, and that'll allow me to put a gin pole on it for when I'm raising it. Um, I'm kind of, I don't have a design that I'm going by, I'm just kind of going by, uh, going by feel here, so we'll see how it works out. All right, so we're set up, we're going to raise just the first section just to get things tightened up. Uh, 
so I've welded on four flanges, uh, just made out of plate steel. Um, well, they're a little rough. It's been a while since I've welded. <laughs> um, and then on this end, we have the receiver there, the short pipe that the gin pole goes in. Um, I'm going to try to raise it today without the gin pole. Um, just because it's only a 20 foot section, I think. I think uh, Jess and I could probably do it. Um, and that'll allow me to get all the, the guy lines um, snugged up to the right um, right distance and everything. I have, I can show you on one here. I have, um, um, I left a bunch of slack. So there's like five feet of slack or four feet of slack um, spare cable that I can kind of adjust it with um, once they're up to get it level. And then I also have turnbuckles on the um, on the anchor points that I can adjust as well once everything's in place. I still have to get the winch mounted on here. Uh, I'm going to bend those rebar straight up and down and use them as a welding point. Uh, they go four feet into the ground in the concrete but I'm going to use them as a um, um, as a welding point and then I'm also going to so a piece of steel is going to be welded to those and also bolted down um, and that will have the base of the winch that will eventually be used to raise and lower this tower once it's at its whole, it's going to be 60 feet, so uh, it would be too much to lift uh, as we're about to do this one, but um, we'll see how it goes. Just going to try to raise it without the gin pole to see if we can walk it up. Okay, so that went fairly smooth. Um, we've got it up, first section anyway, so that's uh, 21 feet um, to the top there. A um, good thing about my poor welds, <laughs> my ugly welds, is that you can't see them up there. <laughs> um, so I've got the uh, one section of the gin pole. So the gin pole is going to be 30 feet, um, a little less than 30 feet. That's 21 feet there um 30 feet is to the the 30 foot mark is actually at that tie out there um so the gin pole will run oh strip there the gin pole will run to probably the edge of this pad here um so i'll have to cut a section for there um guy lines are all in and tight 
Um, I ordered the uh, crimp on connectors. Uh, I forget what they call these things, these saddles. I ordered the, the crimp on ones for the top, but they didn't show up yet. So I currently just have kind of the same setup as this, just two of those up there, but uh, they're supposed to be in in a couple of weeks. Um, so once they're here, I'll actually, next time I'm lowering the tower, I'll, I'll crimp on the real ones. Um, this wire is an eighth inch uh, aircraft cable. The next two sections have 3 16 inch uh, just for the strength. The top one is the most important one. Um, this bottom one is more just to, to keep the bottom section a little bit more stable. But, um, but yeah, other than that, it seemed to went pretty well. That tree's got to come down. I just took the branches off of it for today, but um, that'll allow me to get welding and everything here at least. Um, over the week, I'm going to get the next section ready to go, welded up. Um, I have to go into town and pick up a part for the welder. I wrecked the tip of it. <laughs> um, I saw a guy online cutting the this aircraft cable with the welder, and I tried it and ended up burning the tip. So, uh, oops. But yeah, I'm going to uh, clean up and uh, move on to another project for the day, but I'll be back uh, with the next section. Yeah.